Hello and welcome to NTV Profit. Joining us today is Mr. Bhavi Shagrawal. He is the founder CMD of Ola Electric. He's speaking to us ahead of the Ola Electric IPO, perhaps the first pure play EV company to go public in India. Uh, Bhavi, first of all, welcome to NTV Profit. Tushar, thank you so much. Yeah. So, uh, why the IPO? Why now? You're less than five years in the business. Uh, is why is this the right yeah. time to go public? Actually, Tushar, uh, we started this company maybe only four or five years back, like you said, no? And uh, uh, our mission when we started this company was to really do our bit to make India a global EV hub. Because globally we see there's a bit big uh, transition happening to new energy and electric vehicles. And uh, India is a large part of the world, it's 20% of the world's population and an uh, increasingly large, larger part of the global growth. So it's very important for uh, India to build its own paradigm in uh, EVs. And we started down this journey four years back. Uh, two and a half years ago, we started selling products. And uh, these are all public Vahan numbers. You've seen how the EV penetration has grown in the last two and a half years. And we are at the forefront of the two-wheeler uh, EV industry in India. Uh, as we have done this, India is a very massive opportunity. India is the world's largest two-wheeler market. India is one of the world's largest three-wheeler, et cetera, market. So uh, we want to that as we grow, uh, we are also able to give the option to the entire markets and public investors to uh, partake in, in this uh, new industry creation, and if, if they wish to. And uh, I do believe uh, that uh, EV is going to be uh, a very strong anchor of the automotive industry in India, and we want to do our small part in making that happen. Okay, uh, Bhavish, when we talk about IPO, ke, the first thing people ask is valuation is mm. So, at your last funding, if correct me if I'm mm. wrong, your last private funding, you were about 5.5 billion dollars. Mm. Reports say, and I think your target is about seven to 10 billion dollars. Mm. Does that make your IPO a bit pricey for the uh, for the <laughs> investor? We don't have any uh, valuation targets, Tushar. Mm. Uh, valuation pricing is always set by the market. Uh, we are focused on uh, growing the business. Uh, uh, and uh, the price band will be published in due course as we go through the steps. Uh, and we will definitely do that in consultation with all our bankers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but our focus, as you've seen, is uh, in uh, growing the industry, growing the business. And the, the, the DRHP carries our numbers till June last year. And since then also you've seen how our sales numbers with Vahan have continued to grow. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, the market understands what, uh, what, uh, what benefit. It's uh, funny you mentioned about your market share. You, know, yeah. you have been pretty aggressive with your sales. You have cut costs, cut uh, prices aggressively. And also cut costs. And cut costs, <laughs> of course. So uh, has that yeah. impacted margins? Yeah. We, so I was speaking to somebody in the because mm. I'm speaking to them on the context mm. of uh, somebody I was speaking with recently. Uh, recently mm. said, ICE vehicles is going to be an inflationary trend mm. as we move ahead. Mm. EVs are going to be a deflationary trend going ahead. Yeah. So in terms of that, how does your margins look like, and how does the industry shape up mm. in that respect? You are a third of the industry so far, <laughs> and the two wheel two industry, electric two wheel industry. Maybe slightly more if okay. you see latest uh, latest yeah. few months, but. Uh, uh, you actually said very interesting thing that mm. uh, ice is inflationary, which is true because petrol ke dam hume pata hai kis tarah ke norms bhi aa jayenge. Uh, uh, the emission norms also make the technology more costly. Whereas battery prices globally have been going generally downwards. You know, ten years ago they were let's say thousand dollars a kilowatt hour. Today they are let's say hundred dollars a kilowatt hour. I'm, I'm simplifying a little bit, mm -hmm. but uh, you know EVs are actually reducing in cost and. Uh, the cost of usage of an EV versus an ICE vehicle is more advantageous towards an EV. So, uh, so uh, yeah, I think that, uh, what was your question? Sorry. Basically, how much you have scooter on every scooter? Yes, what is the, uh, so we have been, uh, when we built our strategy, right, we focused on vertical integration. We, uh, as you saw today in our factories, uh, you saw that we have done a lot of vertical integration. The component manufacturing, our factory is also set up at large scale which allows us to uh, manufacture at scale as well as keep costs down. And uh, we are also uh, vertically integrating into the lithium cell, which is the biggest cost component of an EV. 40% of uh, the cost of a typical EV is the lithium cell itself. Mm -hmm. And as we bring our gigafactory online, that cost will also uh, come down. So we have a very strong focus on making sure we expand uh, margin step by step by doing more vertical integration. And that has uh, allowed us to uh, be uh, able to price our vehicles at the price at which we price them. Uh, we visit both the future factory as well as the Giga factory. When does the Giga factory start feeding yeah. the future factory? Uh, 
in that ex extended that conversation, up to localization levels, kya hai? the conversations that we had at, at the campus or at the factory were, there are a few components that we are still importing. Maybe cells at this point of time. Mm. There is the ma magnets that go into a motor, mm. as well as microchips. Mm. So can you give us a timeline of when those, those things also get localized? First of all, what is the localization percentage that no. goes into a... Uh, I can't share with you the absolute percentage of localization, mm -hmm. but pretty much outside of those core components, almost everything else is local. And uh, the biggest, costliest component in the EV is, like I said, the cell. And that's where uh, we started uh, focusing on building our own cell four years ago. And, uh, uh, you know, if you, if you imagine in the ICE world, the biggest uh, competitive advantage was the engine technology. And those companies, automotive companies, which built their own engines always had the best products and the lowest prices. Mm -hmm. In EVs also, uh, there's no engine. Uh, the cell is in many ways the uh, analog, uh, you know, the analogous to an engine in EV, mm -hmm. because the cell defines the charging rates, etc. The cell defines the energy density. So we have uh, four years ago started on our path of building our own indigenous uh, cell technology, which we have now built. Uh, there are multiple phases in commercializing our own cell. Step one is to build it in the lab, and you saw our lab today. It's a world-class lab, uh, and in that we have uh, uh, really proven our technology. Then the next step is the Giga Factory. Uh, the Giga Factory also you saw. Trial production commenced uh, a few weeks back. And uh, we are uh, going through a series of checklists over the next six to nine months to step by step get ready for commercial production. So early next year is when roughly our uh, own cells will come into our own uh, vehicles. And also one more point in this journey of cell commercialization, which uh, we recently achieved uh, an important milestone is the a BIS certification of our cell, okay. which is again an important milestone as we bring our own cell into our own vehicle. Great. So, uh, what you would, would you talk about, say, for example, the industry? Will it be 30% uh, what mm -hmm. we expecting by 2030? Uh, where do you fit in? Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, uh, the investor also looks for uh, diversification. Mm -hmm. What is the company going to do next? You have a Gigafactory com mm -hmm. coming up. The future factory is all set up. Are you getting into more businesses like battery packs, energy storage? What can the investor expect from you going into the future so that they want to invest in your company? Um, see, we uh, have so far built a portfolio of scooters, uh, and we have announced last year our motorcycle roadmap. Mm -hmm. And right now we are working hard on uh, bringing those motorcycles into the market. So next year you will see motorcycles come into the market. Uh, and you know we had announced our motorcycles on 15th August last year. Uh, you know people are anticipating those products. So through next year you will see us uh, release those products and uh, for our giga factory again uh, as we you know we are the largest uh, uh, pli allocatee uh, we got 20 gigawatt hour allocation from the government uh, and in phase 1 we are building 5 gigawatt hour and uh, split into phase 1a and 1b and when we complete phase 1 uh, through next year uh, we will have enough capacity to serve ourselves uh, by that time as well as potentially uh, sell to other automotive companies or even to energy storage requirements okay Final two questions. Uh, uh, one is on, you know there's a crosstown rival who's also planning an IPO. You have been through the process. Any comments that you would, or some wise words would you want to, some learnings that you would want to give them? <laughs> See, you're the first pure play yeah. EV company to go to listen in there, surely in the yeah. next few months. See, uh, the, uh, uh, the... For any other company, not just yeah. the crosstown rival. Sure. See, India, uh, I, you know, I look at it from an industry perspective, India needs to become a global leader in EVs. And more companies need to put their weight behind this movement. Uh, we have done our bit, we will continue to do our bit, but I really uh, wish our competitors the best. I wish that they continue to build uh, products which excite the customer and uh, uh, not just any particular competitor, but more and more the whole industry, including the incumbents, actually need to invest more into creating uh, EV technology so that India can become a global leader. Mm -hmm. Final question. You're very close to price parity with ice scooters. Uh, when do you think is that, go is that going to happen? Uh, are you going to convince me to buy a uh, Ola bike? Because I'm actually very uh, excited by the ADV. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, see our motorbikes, as you, you know, uh, you are a motorcycle, motor enthusiast, right? Yeah. So, uh, when with EV bikes, you will see how the technology is actually so much more exciting than uh, ICE, and I'm, I'm speaking as an enthusiast here myself. So, in terms of price parity already, uh, our prices with the scooter lineup is already at parity or thereabouts for, with their ICE counterparts. And then you have the benefit of the lower cost of ownership because the usage cost is so low. Mm -hmm. 
so I do believe uh, uh, many, many customers are buying EVs for this benefit as well as the the better proposition of just vibration new time, acceleration better, hai, torque better. Hai, you know, there are enough reasons I can I can go on and on about why buying an EV is the right yeah. thing. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Babish, for speaking with us yeah. and all the best for the IPO. Thank you, Dushar. Thank you.